Our reading today is from John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11, which you, may, you, which you may locate in your pew Bible on page 983. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And so seven times in the Gospel of John, and only in the Gospel of John, Jesus Christ says, I am, and then he finishes that statement. So these past few weeks, we've been in the sermon series, I am, exploring each of those seven statements. Today, we're on the last one, the seventh one. We started a few weeks ago with the first one. Jesus said, I am the bread of, oh golly, good, the bread of life. Those who come to me will never be hungry, and those who believe in me will never be thirsty. Then the second statement, Jesus said, I am the light of the, the light of the world. All who follow me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the third statement, Jesus says, I am the gate for whom? For the, for the sheep. I have come that they might have life, and have life how? abundantly, not just have life, but to have life abundantly. The fourth statement, Jesus says, I am the good, the good shepherd. I know my sheep by name, and they know me, and they follow me because they know my, my voice. And then Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the, and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. And all who live and believe in me will never die. And Jesus said, we explored last week, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We talked last week about that being true, but that Jesus did not reveal how that happens. That's all up to God. And today we come to our last, seventh, final I am statement. 
Jesus is talking to his disciples. This is chapter 15 in John's gospel. Three chapters later, John 18, Jesus is arrested and leads to his trial and torture and execution by crucifixion. Jesus knows that is coming. He can feel it. It's coming. But I don't think his disciples know what's going to come, and he's worried about that. So he says in his last I am statement, I am the true vine, you are the branches, those who abide in me, and I in them, they bear much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus says in his last I am statement to these women and men who followed him for three and a half years of their life, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them, they bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That true vine image, his hearers would have understood that in an instant because the vine has long been used as an image for Israel, for the faithful and powerful people of Israel. Jesus says, I am that vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And then he says in this passage that Scott just read, he says, abide. 11 times he says to them, abide. Um, Other translations, other English translations use the word dwell, dwell in me. Others use uh, remain in me. A contemporary English version, the CEV says, stay in me. 11 times Jesus says, remain, abide, dwell, stay. I think he's trying to set a pattern for his followers, knowing that he is soon to leave them. I think he's trying to set a pattern for them to keep them faithful, to keep them productive as his followers after he departs. That pattern, that's really important. There can be good patterns of our lives, there can be terrible, destructive patterns of our lives, but that pattern is a human condition. That's how you get to pulling up in your driveway or into your garage when you think to yourself in that moment, I was gonna make a stop before I got home. You don't even remember making the turns, you just go into this automatic pattern, that's how we survive much of our lives. Jesus is trying to get them to set a pattern for when he departs, when he leaves them. So for 13 years, I was privileged to work for the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA. These are our national offices in Louisville, Kentucky. When I was there, we had an opening, a retirement, and our director of the peacemaking program, the Presbyterian peacemaking program, an amazing, wonderful program, had a retirement of the director, so they had a search for the new director, and they hired ruling elder Gary Payton from Idaho. It was an interesting and a bit controversial hire, because ruling elder Gary Payton, a faithful Presbyterian, he had just retired from the Air Force as a lieutenant colonel. That's right, the Presbyterian Church hired a retired lieutenant colonel in the Air Force to be the new director of the Presbyterian Peacemaking Program. It was a great call. Gary was amazing in that office. A few weeks after he'd come to Louisville, he and his family had moved from Idaho I had lunch with him in the cafeteria. I was finding more about him, finding more about me. We were sharing each other's lives. He turned to me and asked, Roger, have you ever served in the military? I said, Gary, I've not ever had that honor. And he told me about his life as a lieutenant colonel. And then he said, you know, in the military, we drill and train over and over again, doing the exact same thing. Do you know why we do that, Roger? And I said, Gary, I have no idea, but I get that impression that you drill and you train over and over again. Why do you do that to our women and men in the armed services? And he said, we do that, Roger, because of one thing. We know that in a moment of crisis, you will not rise to the occasion. In a moment of crisis, you will default to your pattern. He said, in a moment of crisis, you will default to your pattern, to your training. He said, we'd like to think 
that in that moment of crisis, that young adult is going to rise to the occasion and do something heroic and triumphant. That may be the case, but he said more often than not, they're going to default to their training, to the pattern that we have set for them. Jesus says to the disciples 11 times, abide, remain, stay in me as I am in you. I think he's trying to set a pattern because he knows the crisis is coming. And when that crisis comes, he wants them to default to the pattern that they've set with him. Abide, remain, stay. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them, they bear much fruit. Because without me, you can do nothing. It's not about us having the power ourselves all of that power comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the vine, and we are just attached to him. The reminder is that the power is not about our power. It's about Jesus' power. Our job is to remain, to dwell, to stay, to abide in him. Sometimes that line can get fuzzy. I admit that to myself over and over again. During that same time that I was working for the General Assembly offices in Louisville, I worshiped at the Crescent Hill Presbyterian Church. We were led by a marvelous couple, Mark and Barbara Barnes were our co-pastors. I loved them both, they loved us, they were marvelous pastors. After worship one Sunday, Barbara pulled me aside and said, hey, I'd like to take you out to lunch. And I said, oh, Barbara, thank you, but that's not necessary, I can take you. And she said, no, no, I wanna pay, I wanna take you out to lunch, it's kinda urgent. And I said, oh, okay. She said, when are you next free? And I looked at my calendar and said, oh, Barbara, I'm traveling. I've got lots of meetings. I'm not free for three weeks. And she said, I'll take it. I kind of expected that from your schedule. So three weeks later, she came to the building downtown Louisville, took me out to lunch, sat across from each other at this Vietnamese cafe. And she said, Roger, I've got great news for you. Please lean in. And we're just sitting across from each other. And I'm like, okay. And she said, no, no, lean in. Seriously, lean in. So I leaned a little bit in. She goes, no, no, lean in closer. This is great news. You have to hear this news. This is really important. I'm like, what? She goes, lean in. So I leaned in, and she said, Roger, the great news is the Messiah has come. I was like, oh, oh, okay. I, I pretty much get that. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, no, I got better news. I have better news. Lean in. Lean closer. No, no, Barbara, what? Lean in. Roger, this is better news. Lean in closer. So I leaned in, and she said, you are not him. <laughs> well, and I'm sure because I'm me, I'm sure I got defensive at that point. Well, I, I, I know that. I'm just working hard here. I'm just doing the Lord's work. I, I, I'm not the Messiah. I get that. What my pastor was doing was holding up a mirror to me, and she was saying, oh, Nishioka, this is not a good pattern. It isn't all about you, Nishioka. It's about your faithfulness. It really is about God, the one who made you in God's own image, redeems you every single day, and sustains you by the love of God. That really is what it's about. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them, they bear fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus says, abide, remain, stay, 11 times. Remain in me, stay, dwell. It's about how you and I set that pattern for our whole lives. So one of the reasons why I'm so honored to be one of your pastors is that you show me that pattern over and over again. Golly, you inspire me time and time again. Susan Lord, member of our congregation, very active here and even more so in the last years at Village on Antioch. Susan died last fall, 90 years old. Active, vibrant, beautiful. Last year and a half or so, not so great. Her body began to betray her. Her mind was always right there. After one hospitalization, yet another one, Susan was in rehab at Ignite, the rehab center across from KU. I went to go visit her yet again. 
It was winter, and so it got dark really easily soon, and so I realized it was dark when I got to her room. Her eyes were closed, and I thought she was sleeping, and so I just sat next to her and prayed for a while. Then she opened her eyes and said, oh, it's you. I said, yeah, good to see you. And as she moved to face me, she winced, which I knew came from the pain she was feeling. So we checked in with each other, and then I said, hey, tell me about the pain. And she smiled and said, yeah, it gets pretty bad. She said they had had pretty rigorous physical therapy that afternoon earlier, so she was still a bit sore. I said, so did the therapist talk to you about pain? And she said, yep, he did. He's a good young man. I said, have you talked to your physician, nurses about the pain? She goes, yes, and they've prescribed some things for me. I don't like it. I said, okay. I don't like it because it makes me sleepy and I don't want to sleep until nighttime. I just don't want to sleep the whole day away in case someone like you comes to visit me or Pete, her son, or her daughter-in-law. She said, the grandkids will come by every once in a while. I don't want to be asleep, so I don't take the medication. Oh, Susan, I know, but golly, I think it'll help you. No, it also makes my head fuzzy, fuzzier than it gets usually. I don't like that either. So I don't want to take the medication. I said, okay. She said, no, I'll take it late at night when I'm ready to go to sleep. Then I will take it, but not now. What do you do, Susan, then? And she said, you know what I do for the pain now, Roger? You taught me this, she said. I've been in your classes and worship with you, and you do this thing where you say, breathe in God's mercies and breathe out God's mercies to the world, breathe in. She said, I do that for a while, and it helps. And I said, I'm glad it helps. It helps me too, I'm glad. She says, but then when that doesn't help anymore, I say a prayer. And I said, oh, Susan, I'm so glad. Praying is really important. She said, it helps me, it helps me in my pain. My prayer is only one word, and I said, oh, Jesus loves simple prayers. Susan, what is your prayer? And she said, Roger, I'll lie here, and I'll close my eyes, and I'll just say one word. I'll just say, Jesus. 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 She said, I'll say that over and over again. And it helps. It helps me with my pain. Jesus said, abide, remain, stay, dwell, 11 times, to set the pattern for our lives. Remain in me, stay in me, abide in me, Jesus, Jesus. So, when that mean kid at school comes up to you yet one more time, and nobody seems to reach out to help you, Remain, stay, abide. When that loved one that you took an oath to love in sickness and in health over these many years, in the moment that they don't recognize you anymore, remain, stay, Abide. And what young one, but yet one more black man is killed by those who are sworn to protect and to serve. Remain. Stay. Abide. And when you're waiting for that diagnosis, and your mind is taking you to all kinds of horrible places, and you cannot sleep. Remain, stay, abide. And when that one whom you have trusted and loved 
has betrayed your trust and has broken your relationship and you are worried that your marriage will not survive. Remain, stay, abide. And when you feel like you've lost hope and that the addiction will take your life and the depression will consume you, Remain, stay, abide. Jesus, Jesus. The bread of life, the light of the world, the gate for the sheep, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life, and the vine. And we are the branches, those who abide in me, abide in my love. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Thanks be to God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.